Hey, what's up? This is Caleb Ward, and in this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a Pokeball in After Effects and show you how to do this cool anime lightning effect just like Pokemon. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go to File, New Project, and I'm going to go to Composition, New Composition, and we're going to make the width 2000, the height 1000, and we can make the frame rate 24 and the duration 10, and we'll just call this uh, Pokeball. We'll just call it Pokeball and hit OK. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new solid, so I'm going to hit Command Y. And we'll make this first solid red, just like the Pokeball. And we'll hit OK. And I'm going to go in and create an ellipse. And I'm going to hold down Shift here. And I'm going to turn on our proportional grid so we can see it here. And I want it to be right in the middle. And so I'm going to zoom in here, kind of line it up perfectly. And I'm going to change the mask mode to subtract. So now we have this circle here in the middle. and I think I may turn down the expansion just a little bit. So it's about that big. Cool. And I'm going to go in and add in a rectangle to this solid just to mask out a little bit of the frame here. And I'm going to go to subtract. So now we have this square with a little semicircle. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. And I'm going to hit Shift Command Y. And we're going to change the color of this layer to white. Hit OK. And hit New. And what I'm going to do is rotate this composition 180 degrees. So I'm just going to hit R. And we can type 180 and hit OK. So now we have the red on top, the white on bottom. And it's time to create the inner circle here. So I'm going to go to Layer, New Shape. And we're going to create a new ellipse. And what you can do is go to Fill. And we're going to turn this fill to white. And I'm going to turn the path size down just a little bit. Maybe something about there. We're at 85. And we're going to create another shape layer. So I'm just going to duplicate this shape layer. And let's add in a stroke effect. And let's get rid of the fill. So if we scale up our shape here, we have a real thin stroke. And we can just go to stroke here and turn up the width to where it's appropriate for a Pokeball. And I'm going to scale it down just a little bit, right about there. And zoom out, and I'm going to turn our transparency off. So now you can see that we have this basic Pokeball texture. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these layers here, and I'm going to hit Shift Command C, and we'll call this Pokeball Texture, and hit OK. And I'm going to apply a CC Sphere effect. So you can tell already that our Pokeball is looking pretty good. I'm going to go in to shading here because we want it to be flat just like a cartoon and I'm going to turn up the ambient to 100 and I'll turn down our diffuse to zero and we can turn up specular to 100 maybe we can turn down the roughness just a little bit and we'll go ahead and turn down the metal to zero. And instead of rendering the full, I just want to render the outside. So now, if we go to our rotation here, you can see that it'll only render what is facing the camera, nothing behind. Okay, so we want our Pokeball to basically spin in, and at about three seconds, we want it to kind of slowly come to a stop. So I'm going to set a keyframe for our X rotation at three seconds, and I'm going to go back in time to the very beginning, and I'm going to kind of rotate it maybe twice. We can kind of crank this up here till it's about, let's say, two and zero, zero. So now it just kind of spins in twice and comes to rest. 
but that keyframe is pretty harsh. So you can see if we, if we play it back here, it kind of spins at a constant rate and then it just all of a sudden stops. Uh, that doesn't look very organic. So I'm gonna select this keyframe here and go to the graph editor and we're gonna pull this up and just make this hill pattern. So we just want this kind of curve here. So if I play it back, you can see that the ball spins and it slowly comes to rest. And that looks good. And I think I may just rotate it along the Y axis just a little to keep it a little off center so it's maybe a little more organic. Cool. And the last thing we want to do is create kind of a gray outline. We don't want the ball to be see-through because right now we can see there's transparency behind it. And to fix that, I'm going to hit Command Y and I'm going to select a, just a dark gray and hit OK, hit OK. And I'm going to select an ellipse here so we can just kind of make it about the same size as the Pokeball and I'm going to go ahead and drag it below our Pokeball. And all we're looking to do is just make it kind of perfectly centered with the Pokeball here. And if we wanted to, we could always go in and turn down the expansion just a little bit, maybe right about there. And we'll just move this around to where it's perfectly centered. Okay, cool. So now we can see we have a Pokeball that spins, it's outlined, and it slowly comes to rest. Okay, so let's go ahead and select both of these layers here. I'm gonna hit Shift Command C, and we'll call this Pokeball Spin, and hit OK. So now we're in our final composition here, and essentially we want the Pokeball to kind of spin in from the bottom and come to the top. But first things first, we wanna change our composition from 2000 in width to 1920 and then the height 1080 and that's just going to get us a standard HD format. So let's make it look like this ball is actually spinning into the frame. So I'm going to go to two seconds, hit the P key and I'm going to set a keyframe for position and we'll go to the very beginning and we'll move it off of the frame. And then about halfway there, maybe about at one second and we'll say six frames. I'm gonna move it up to where it's right about here. So essentially the Pokeball just kind of spins in and slowly comes to rest. And I'm gonna select this keyframe here and go to the graph editor. And essentially we just want this movement to be real smooth. So I'm gonna go in and create this kind of hill effect. Just want, we're looking for just kind of some mountains here that look like they kind of just blend into each other. So now if we watch it back, we see we have a ball that spins in and it slowly comes to rest. Cool. And I'm going to set a keyframe at two seconds for the scale. So I just hit the S key and set a keyframe and go to the very beginning and we'll turn it down to maybe about 50. And if we play it back, we see that we have the ball. It kind of gets bigger and slowly spins in. Now one thing I can see is that the ball kind of hits hard at that point and then slowly spins down. So I don't want that, so I'm gonna deselect uh, the graph editor there, select my position keyframes, go back into the graph editor, and I'm just gonna kind of make this into a kind of a taller mountain here. So we're just gonna have it speed up really quickly and then slowly come to rest, exactly, just like that. And what we'll do is hit S and we'll select our scale keyframes and we'll make a curve just like we did at the very beginning. So it scales up fast and slowly scales on. All right, cool. Okay, so the next thing we gotta do is create a cool anime background. So I'm gonna hit Command Y to create a new solid and we'll just call this BG for background and hit OK. And I'm gonna apply a fractal noise effect. And we're just gonna turn up the contrast pretty significantly here, somewhere about there. And I'm gonna bring in a box blur and drag it over. And we're gonna set it to vertical only and we'll turn up the iterations to about five and just kind of blur it out to where it kind of creates this, uh, these kind of vertical lines here. And I'll hit repeat edge pixels. Cool, so I did that just to give you a visual example of what this is gonna look like. So now we can go into our fractal noise here and go to transform and I'm gonna go to the very beginning and I'm gonna set a keyframe for the offset turbulence. And then we're gonna move to the very end and I'm gonna pull down the Y a few times, to maybe about 
5,000 or so. And so now we have this effect that looks like it's kind of pulling down and we're just trying to recreate a cool anime effect. So now I'm gonna add in a posterize effect and this is gonna just get rid of some of these softer edges and make it look a little more hand-drawn. We'll turn the iterations down to maybe about five. And let's add in a levels effect. Levels. And we'll kind of create just some harsher contrast here. Something like that where you just have these three colors and they're really harsh along the edges and really rough. And if you notice in Pokemon, the backgrounds, the moving backgrounds that kind of we're basing this style after, they don't actually move directly up and down. They, they usually come from kind of a center point towards the bottom. So I'm gonna add in a corner pin effect. And I can just drag these bottom handles here to make it look kind of like it's coming from the bottom. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just scale up this layer kind of fill the whole frame. So now it kind of looks like it's coming from the bottom, just creating this kind of halo effect. And the last thing we got to do is add in a tritone effect. And this is just going to give our background a little bit of color. So I'm going to select maybe a blue here, maybe a little bit deeper blue, something like there. And for our black, we can go to kind of a darker navy blue and hit okay and let's go ahead and drag the background to the bottom so now we can see we have our pokeball that spins on and it has the moving background and it just kind of slowly fades on cool all right so now you can see the pokeball kind of spins in there it falls into frame and we have this cool moving background so the next thing i want to add in is just this like cartoon electricity effect that kind of is what happens whenever a Pokemon gets sucked into the ball. So uh, in order to do that, I'm going to hit Command Y and create a new solid. And we'll just call this Energy. And we can make this uh, kind of a bright red and hit OK. And I'm just going to go to our pin tool here and create just kind of an elliptical shape. And we can drag this down to where it's not in the frame. And I'm going to go into the drop down menu here and set a keyframe for the mask path. And we'll move forward a few seconds and we can just begin manipulating this mask. And we're just going to create this kind of shape where it looks like it's just kind of morphing upwards. So we want it to just kind of look like it's morphing, kind of turning into jello, almost like a, like a flubber effect. And we're just going to grab the edges here. And then at about one second, we want it to kind of fall into the Pokeball here. So we can just actually just grab the handles here, just bring them right to the middle. Cool, and so this looks a little strange here, so I can actually just grab these handles here. And we have, and just move them around to create this kind of this cool little jello effect. So right now the shape is really rough and that's because we need to add in the turbulent displace effect. And so when we add in this effect, it's actually gonna create a really cool energy look. So I'm gonna turn up the amount to about 100 and we'll turn up the complexity to maybe around three. And so now if we play it back, you can see we have this energy effect and it kind of moves. But the problem is you can see that it kind of locks into these areas and we don't want that. So instead, I'm going to set a keyframe for the evolution at zero seconds and we can just move forward to about two seconds, just kind of rotate it about 360 degrees. So now it kind of moves on and just takes a bunch of shapes and then falls into the Pokeball. So what we want to do is right about here, I'm going to... Uh, hit shift command D to duplicate and delete that extra uh, little bit of energy there. So now it kind of falls into the Pokeball and disappears. Cool. And we don't want it to be solid. Instead, I'm going to set the transfer mode to hard light. So now if we play it back, we can see it just kind of gets sucked into the Pokeball. And it's a little hard on the edges, so I'm going to add in a quick fast blur effect. 
and just turn it up to maybe about six or so and hit repeat edge pixels. So now if we play it back, we can see it just kind of gets sucked into the ball. All right, so that's about it. If you wanted to go in and add in a little rotation or perhaps you can make the button glow red like in Pokemon, you could, or you could download the free project file from my website at VFX City. That's VFX.City. And while you're there, go check out a few of the other cool tutorials we have on the site. Again, this has been Caleb Ward. We'll see you next time.